and he appears from down the tanks. Our David Copperfield, welcome along to the vlog, folks. Monday morning, we're all bright, we're all ready to go, and uh, god damn, have I got a bunch of projects that need ticking off the list this week. Of course, we have the tank retrofit. That's something that's going to be ongoing for, our next, for the next couple of weeks. I have to make a pump clip for the brown stroke red ale. That needs to get cast, well it's cast, that needs to get put on the bar should I say. We need to do a taste test on that as well to finish it up. Let me just uh, get focused on here. And uh, I've also got a few projects that are going on in the beer garden still. The railings need to be completed. We need to touch up the paintwork and uh, get them looking nice. We need to manufacture some pier caps for the top of the, the brick piers. We've got four of those to make out of concrete. We'll be making our own form. I've never done it before. I've cast concrete before for certain things, but never for a pier cap where we want to have a nice, smooth, dimensional shape. And then we've got quite a few projects going on at home. We live in a two up, two down. It's a shoebox. The kids share in a bedroom. We don't like it. We want to get out. But unfortunately, we're not in a position to financially yet. We're working on it, of course. Uh, so what we're looking to do is just make the space that we're in a little bit more efficient. So in the bedroom, I've decided to build a sliding door built-in wardrobe. That's something that might happen more off camera. I don't think Gemma really wants to bring you guys into our bedroom, so to speak. But uh, I'm sure we'll be able to capture quite a few of the shots of the manufacturing and maybe some of the finished article. We'll see how it goes, we'll see how it goes. And then once we've done that, we're gonna incrementally work through the house, improving the storage facilities and basically getting rid of the clutter. What are you eating, Chance? He's found something. So anyway, we've got tons and tons of projects to get to be there, to be getting on with, of course. Uh, and first of all, today, what we're going to do is uh, crack on <coughs> with the <coughs> excuse me, with the plumbing for these tanks. Get the plumbing uh, kind of in and ready to go, and uh, and then we'll take a view on to the next project. But it's probably going to involve something along the lines of getting some timber to maybe start A, cladding these bad boys, and B, start cutting the wood for the wardrobe. And then I've got some really big news, but you're gonna to have to wait until later on in the video for that. So I've just spent the last 20, 30 minutes making these little brackets, hole drilled in the center there, stainless steel, about an inch wide from Angle Lion. And the idea is that these are going to live on here, like that, just on the bottom of these legs. That won't stay there though. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a piece of timber, we're gonna put it into the bracket, and then under this lip at the top, and that will hold that piece of timber onto the, uh, onto the side of the tank, which will then allow us, as we have a piece of timber on every section, on every leg, one, two, three, four, all the way around. Then we can strap some hardboard strips or something similar to the outside of that, meaning that we've got a timber frame or radius that we can then finally attach the boards to. You'll see here, look, all these screws that go through. Well, behind there, there is, and there, three bands, three bands of hardboard you attach the screws to it to, uh, sorry, you put the, you attach the match board into it with screws into there and that holds it long enough for you to apply some fix and fill foam and put a retaining band on the outside and then with the retaining band we'll just simply fabricate a little bolt mechanism here where as you tighten this bolt it pulls these two pieces together thus tightening the band onto the tank meaning that all of the timber is now held on with a combination of wood, screws, welded fittings, and strap banding, and fix and fill foam. And then the key is the gap between 
the match board in and the tank we then fill with rock wall insulation. This particular tank is only going to have about that much of a gap in between so from the tank essentially to the outside of this wood about 30 mil because this is 30 mil angle but 30 mil of rock wall insulation along with 5 10 mil of timber is actually a really good thermal barrier for these tanks so there is the actual bracket fitted I've only welded one side because frankly that's all it needs and because it's obviously on a semicircle on a circular piece of pipework there I'm not going to get both sides to touch there's no point filling it that ain't going anywhere trust me so what I will do is just disconnect this tank from the earth stable we'll push this one out of the way We'll bring in another one. Pop the earth back on. This helmet is actually all right, believe it or not. It's allowed me to uh, crack on with these jobs that otherwise I may not have got done if I had to wait for eBay to deliver a new helmet. And also Froggy, the fantastic gentleman that he is, says he might have one for me too, so that's like double bubble folks so let me get down on here we'll just zoom in onto this section uh, I've got about 80 amps on the welder uh, we're using the switch on the thumb the trigger on the uh, on the gun so to speak the torch and then all we're doing is just lining this bad boy up on one side uh, line it up with a mark that we've got made I've got a one and a half second ramp on the uh, on the heat so it doesn't go straight into 80 amps. Then I've got the bracket tacked on now and I'm just running down the one side of the bracket and welding its full length to the leg and then I'm just going up and across on both sides like this because when I uh, when I cut the brackets with the angle grinder I didn't clean off the sharp edges and the swarf so just hitting it like that both sides with the torch actually at 80 amps just kind of melts away melts away any uh, any remnants of those sharp widow makers or the sharp pieces of swarf on the steel so when we go to work it it's fine so I'll just stick the camera back here and hopefully hopefully you'll get a view of me just buzzing around putting the rest of these brackets on give you an idea of exactly how long it's going to take me shouldn't be long really Just like that. Because this is on the outside of the tank, I'm not all that bothered about shielding and anything else uh, because it don't matter what colour these welds come out, they're going to be behind the timber, you ain't going to see them. But having said that, I will take off the tripod, give you a bit of a closer look at exactly what we've achieved. So, this is the one that you've just seen me finish. As you can see, nice bit of colour in there, some purple, some gold, some straw colours and of course, rock solid. That ain't going nowhere. And then here are the others that we've done, almost exactly identical. And uh, that's good enough now, we pop a screw through there to hold the piece of timber on. And then this particular tank doesn't have its angle on there yet, we've got those ordered. But, as I said, this tank does. And you can see where we're just gonna slot the timber in behind there. And it will give us a very, very similar finish to what we've got here. These ones I actually made the angle because I couldn't roll angle. So I had two bits of flat and just welded the edges together. 
But by heck, that was a job. And I ain't doing it again. filmed a clip and didn't have the camera on. Anyway, the clip was me preparing, uh, putting an OG on this board here. A nice little finish around the edge. Just needs to be hit with the, uh, hit with the sandpaper and you'll be able to see exactly what I've done once this has been nipped off. Uh, but yeah, the idea behind this is, uh, I'm obviously doing several jobs today and that's because I don't have all of the equipment so as you've just seen in the previous clip we've put the uprights on the tanks, the timber uprights and they're slotted into those brackets that we welded on this morning now the, their job is to hold up all of the cladding around the tank when we get to that stage I can't continue any further with that because I need to put some hardboard on there I need some cladding, I need some rock wall insulation and I need to put the electric blankets on there as well so there are a few things that we need to uh, we need to approach when I've got uh, well I need the van essentially to go and pick some more timber up so as I mentioned briefly this morning as well we also have some things to do at home one of them is a shelf for the kitchen so I thought well while I'm, I've got the woodworking stuff out I just prepared this shelf here this is two meters long by about 200 mil wide. I'm just going to hit it with a little bit of brie wax and stain it after I've sanded it. And then this shelf is going to be hung upside down that way. So the trim is going to be visible from the bottom. And then because of the position it's in, we're going to have some top slung brackets. So the brackets are going to hold the shelf from there. So a uh, bit of an upside down shelf if you like. And then earlier on today I did also mention that we've got some special announcement. Well, it's here. I'll show you what it is. So, as I mentioned earlier on folks, we do have a little bit of a special announcement. Uh, well, kind of twofold really. Uh, announcement number one is I've been sent a Coconut Shy PA. As well as another beer, uh, Easy Peasy Pale Ale. Uh, Embrace the haters, she says. So we're going to take them home and get stuck into them uh, as soon as possible. I will leave a link with the guy's name down below. I don't have it with me at the moment, but thank you very much for sending these. Um, be nice to see what this coconut shy is like, actually. I think it's about time we brewed another batch. Feels good in the keg, in the bottle. Uh, and then the second announcement is a lot of you might have watched yesterday's video where I made um, a stir fry. Well, the idea behind that video was not necessarily to make a stir fry, it was to talk to you folks about the purchase that I made over the weekend. Yes, I bit the bullet and I went ahead and I ordered the 20 gallon brewery basically from uh, SS Brewtech. I ordered it via Malt Miller, I paid the full price, I didn't ask for anything off, that way then I, I know that uh, I can give it my honest opinion when it finally arrives. 
But the reason I punted for that was purely the build quality of the tanks. So I did quite a lot of research and I noticed that a lot of the tanks on Brew Builder, for instance, and some of the other homebrew websites, even catering pot manufacturers, didn't necessarily have steel in their pots, which was up to spec for me. And the fact that these pots are 1.2 millimeter steel kind of sold it for me. They're a little bit more expensive, but you know what? You pay your money, you take your chance, but you also get what you pay for a lot of the time with these things. And uh, well, I don't want to be buying another kit and uh, this pilot kit is going to be on display. It's going to be utilized in the pub. Uh, we're going to use it for uh, brew days on site when we go to events as well. So I really want it to be all singing and all dancing. So that is something that's going to be quite uh, an exciting build for me. I'm looking forward to getting really stuck into this, building another kit again. And I want to think I'd, I'd have enough of it by now, but I really must be a sucker for punishment. Um, at the moment, when the kit is up and running, I'm just going to power it by the control panel that we've got in the brewery. And then instead of building a control panel for the new kit, what I will do is I'll hijack the small one which we've got control in the brewery now and then I'll replace that one that we've got control in the brewery now with a bigger and better spec one therefore future proofing any improvements that we go for um, in the brewery itself you never know we might scale up a bit so yeah a couple of projects up and coming folks so with that now explained what I'm going to do is put these beers in the car ready to go home I might pre-chill them in the fridge here first actually and then before we go home, because it's approaching five o'clock, we're gonna get out uh, our sander, our grinder, and uh, our welder, and we're gonna put together a couple of fancy pants brackets for this shelf, and we're gonna wax it, sand it and wax it, because I'm gonna put this up tonight as well when I get home, just to give us a bit more space in the kitchen. Be ready for home, buddy. Oh shit, I just twisted my bloody wrist. I'm trying to change angle on dangle. Unfortunately, I don't have any uh, 20 to 40 mil flat, flat stock to make um, some really nice brackets out of. So I've had to go to Wilco, just pick up these cheap ones to get me out of a pinch. They'll work, but you can see what I was kind of going to go for. Lovely bit of flat stock, bit of nice thick 12 mil angle iron, uh, not angle iron, uh, rebar. And they would make some very attractive looking hinges indeed. But hey ho, it is what it is. So we're going to chuck all this stuff in the car. We're going to tally on up to uh, the hoose. And we're going to put this bracket on the wall, put the shelf up, populate it with some pots and pans, and then maybe, just maybe, sit down to one of these lovely beers that I've been sent. Coconut shy. There we are. I'm sweaty from doing it, but last job of the day. Pan shelf at the top of the kitchen door, just to keep the pans Nice and tidy out of the way, folks. Because now I'm getting back into my cooking. We've got some big frigging pans. Anyway, that's it. I'm going to go and get in the shower. There's still a bit of sunshine left outside. It's half past five. That's good news for me. So I'm going to crack into this coconut shy PA. If you're lucky, yeah, sod it. I'll do it on camera. Don't go anywhere. Hello folks, we finally made it. Jesus, there's some real uh, kerfuffle there. So I've been online trying to find out who it actually was that sent me this particular example of the coconut shy PA. 
So recognise this label boys and girls. If you do, then it's definitely your beer. I've searched all the way through Messenger and all the way through my face uh, YouTube messages as far as I can go. But uh, it's difficult, things get lost in the ether. Um, and then in the interim, Dominic run a bloody bath and he left the water on and went on his Xbox. So we've had a flood in the kitchen. So I've consequently had to take the light fitting down and empty the water out of it because it kept tripping all the electrics. And then because the electrics have been flashing on and off, the white balance on the camera seems to be terrible now and uh, well I'm far too drunk this afternoon or this evening, definitely not afternoon, it is quarter to nine. I'm far too drunk this evening to put that right. So we're just going to go ahead with it and here is as promised the Coconut Shy Beer Review by uh, the mystery but no doubt well appreciated supplier. Malts are Pale Malt, Cora Malt, Flaked Oats, Hops are Columbus, Cascade and Mosaic, Yeast is USO5 and conditioning has been made achievable via keg. Excuse me, a little bit of hay, fi hay fiver, high pollen count. These are always the best beer reviews aren't they, let's face it. Well, it sounds good. <laughs> That's as good as that can. I probably should have done this another day. So uh, yeah, here we go. Let's have a sniff. I'm picking up a bit of yeast, a bit of CO2, a bit of mosaic, a bit of Columbus. No coconut as of yet. And normally coconut is something that I am tuned into because I was a hater of coconut years ago, as I'm sure I've said before. So yeah, coconut's not evident on the nose. So maybe that's something that needs revisiting for this particular batch. Heavily carbonated. It is streaming. Totally streaming up the glass as you can see there. It's a heavily carbonated beer. Anyway, let's just dive straight in. Mmm. Perfect. Yeah, coconut is all there in the taste. It's very, very, very reminiscent of the coconut shy. In fact, I'd be hard pressed to distinguish the two. The only giveaway is the coconut's not there on the aroma for me. And with the cask ale version, and even more so with the craft ale, the keg version, uh, coconut on the aroma is a big thing. But wow, 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 it's definitely there in the taste. Hmm. Fuck a duck, my friend. I could drink that all day long. You've hit the nail on the head. If maybe you could, uh, I don't know, I'm thinking maybe a, a longer dry hop edition of the coconut, or maybe split it into two, or maybe reduce the CO2 fractionally. I think, We've lost a little bit of the coconut aroma. Maybe a little bit of that coconut aroma was lost in uh, transferring from keg to bottle. I don't know, but I can tell you now that it's definitely there in the flavor. And this beer, well, uh, really I would struggle to tell you if it wasn't mine or not. The water profile seems to be spot on. The balance is right. The bitterness is right. It looks good, look at the head. Maybe I'm pissedly waffling on and uh, giving this beer too much distinction, but quite frankly, it is the spot tonight. And I've drank many a pint of Coconut Shy PA, and this one is right on the money. If you've not sent one of these to Tom yet, I recommend that you do forthwith, my friend, because no doubt he will enjoy this more than anybody else I know, because at the minute, He's only allowed to eat four lettuce leaves and sniff, he's allowed to sniff the apron of a butcher three times a week. So this for him, I know, 
would be a real treat. <sighs> and what a great, great beer to end the vlog on, folks. Thanks for sending me it. I really feel quite ashamed that I can't find whose beer this actually is. I seriously have spent like 15 minutes trolling through my social medias uh, and there was nothing in the box, but it's fantastic. So I'll leave you with a shot of the bottle label, folks. We'll see you on tomorrow's vlog. And uh, if this is your beer, then shout out in the comments because this is an absolutely fantastic rendition of the Coconut Shy. See you tomorrow. Cheers. Yeah,